Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSGO News. Thank you all for the great comments recently as well as the great follows. I really do appreciate you guys joining the CSGO News community as well as we've broken 78,700 strong. So thank you very much for joining guys. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode and it will be my last episode for a couple days. I'm taking a road trip tomorrow. My next episode should be Sunday morning around this same time. Let's hop into our first story though, all about the French desired player, probably one of the most sought after pro players currently right now and that is going to be the French player Zai Wu. I really underestimated how many teams and organizations really do want this guy on their lineup and apparently he's going to stick it out with the education route though as on live stream a couple days ago he did confirm guys he rejected a $15,000 per month offer from the team themselves known as Envious on top of that according to Nell as well other offers on the table from North American teams as well as the French team LDLC as well as Hellraisers on top of that he is rejecting offers left and right but he will five to six months down the line after he finishes his BAC which is actually a very legitimate degree over there in France if you guys want to compare it to something according to Nell it's actually the equivalent of a high school a high school degree but of course here in America comparing that it's pretty much a bottom line requirement nowadays for any job out there to have at least a high school degree if not even more than that so congrats to him following his parents advice as he did say on stream guys his parents want him to finish his education first before pursuing a pro career now I do want to I, of course uh, agree with Nell here on this point for all for the few of you guys out there who are saying why the heck would he not accept a $15,000 per month offer I mean that's a, an extenuous salary probably one of the top salaries right now uh, out there for a guy of this age and the thing is this if he doesn't finish his education if his CSGO career only lasts three to four years trust me without a high school equivalent degree he's not going to get very far so I definitely agree with this guys and even five to six months down the line he is still going to be a very desired player of course all these organizations though who knows who's going to offer him in five to six months that's towards the end of ESL Pro League as well as going to be the time to start the major qualifier a very interesting time but I'm sure he'll still have offers on the table so congrats to Zai Wu being one of the many players out there pursuing education over CSGO and that was just crazy news for all of you guys who follow him. On top of that though, even breaking news, we had Nade Shot apologize of course for releasing the 100 Thieves CSGO roster. I do want to point out kind of a confusing factor though. I'm going to show you guys on screen the 100 Thieves release statement. If you guys can see the highlighted portion of that, they do say that the, the overwhelming beast issues were one of the primary reasons actually why they let the roster go. I was confused by this though because Team 1, our former Team 1 member Bit, who is currently on that X 100 Thieves roster, he actually came out with a statement with HLTV and said the following, where the team apparently has no no visa issues anymore, which really kind of goes against everything that's been said so far. So that leads to a question for all of you guys in the comment section. What do you think about this? I mean, 100 Thieves pretty much said uh, one of the overwhelming reasons why they actually released this roster was visa issues, and then one of the members of that team they released with visa issues comes out and says no one on the team, absolutely no one, not Henny, not Lucas, uh, not FNX, or Bit himself have visa issues any longer. So it really makes you kind of curious as to why 100 Thieves released the roster. Are they kind of just cutting the cord? They've already spent way too much money. They're going to focus on League of Legends. Who knows what the problems are over there, but Nade Shot did apologize for that, guys. And on top of that, as speculated, as expected, apparently 100 Thieves is expected to go to North American, whoever wants to sign them in a North American organization. And on top of that, they do want Phelps as their fifth member. It's going to be speculated, which is really expected by all of you guys. Of course, the, probably the, the number one available pro player in the Brazilian scene right now would be Phelps. And of course, having an experience from SK Gaming does lead to that factor. So yes, 100 Thieves going forward. The ex-100 Thieves roster looking for a fifth member. They will go to North America and they will be signed sometime soon. You can almost guarantee it. The question is who will sign them. And of course, before we get into our next story, guys, thank you all for watching, especially thanks to my sponsor, CS.Money, probably one of the better trading websites out there that I personally have used in the past. If you guys want to use my link down below, I do appreciate that, guys. If you ever want to trade your CSGO skins very fast and, of course, very efficient as well, the link is down below. And thank you guys to all who use that, and especially a big thanks to CS.Money for sponsoring this episode and some future episodes as well. Now, bouncing off of that, guys, we do have, of course, some breaking news out there as well in the CSGO scene. And that is for all you NIP fans out there. I'm very excited to announce that Threat has now stepped down as their coach and CLG, former CLG and NIP coach himself, PETA, of course, back a while ago, he was their coach, but still a very experienced coach in this scene who's been gone for quite some time, a former friend of Michael Lely. He met a lot of those guys through the scene itself. And I really do kind of uh, like this change. If you guys do not know, I'm, I'm assuming that a lot of these pro players, at least, at least the NIP players probably had input to acquire a new coach, which is always a good sign if they all agree on a new coach and bring him in. It's also expected though in breaking news as well, apparently NIP have interest in Dennis. Now we've talked about this so 
so many times in the past few days. Dennis has been alluding on his Twitter with several hinted tweets. Who knows who's going to sign Dennis at this point? It could be maybe an optic. It could be, of course. Uh, there's so many options right now, so many things that people do not know for sure. This is the last time I'm going to talk about Dennis until he's officially signed by a team. But apparently, NIP are now looking into him after signing their new coach, PETA. So congrats to all you NIP fans out there. They are making moves. Are they the right moves, though? We're going to find out sometime shortly. On top of that as well, we've had SK Gaming guys. Of course, the big talk about SK Gaming currently is will they leave SK for another roster out there like Immortals, like the MIBR tagline? It does seem they're going to be moving back to the Immortals organization, but no one knows as to when that will be or if it's actually official. But here's another tweet by Taco Guys, one of his latest tweets, which kind of does allude to the fact that SK Gaming will be leaving. Of course, you guys see what he says there. He can't talk about much right now. That's pretty much a tagline. That's a really go-to line of a player who is currently under talks or other organizations and cannot talk about certain things because he's under his contract as a non-disclosure. It's pretty much a go-to tagline or go-to way to say things, uh, to, say, to say that you can't talk about it because something is going on right now. So whether he's re-signing with SK or signing with another team out there, probably the latter, guys. I do expect SK to leave this roster. The question is, though, will it be to Immortals or will it be to MIBR or will it to be some surprise team out there who offered some immaculate amount of money? I think it will be, the, of course, the first option, probably Immortals organization. We should find out sometime soon, though. Again, early in 2018 is when those contracts are set to expire. And also in recent CSK news, kind of a topic to talk about in the comment section down below. I want to touch on this very briefly, guys. We had Richard Lewis with this two on screen, kind of brought up a lot of controversy in the scene. Of course, we probably know, and you guys have been aware of this as well, there have been so many thrown matches in the past of CSGO or matches that you thought were thrown. I remember, I think it was actually Virtus Pro a couple months ago. I'm not sure if it was against Heroic or some random teams on Nuke, which is, you know, of course, throughout 2017, early 2017 ish, late 2016, we knew that Nuke was Virtus Pro's most dominant map, yet they somehow lost like five nukes in a row or something ridiculous like that, like that with ridiculous score lines. I, a lot of people thought that Virtus Pro became Virtus Throw during that period. And of course, throughout the Chinese scene, it's been riddled with uh, apparent match throws as well. Richard Lewis kind of pointed out the fact there have probably been so many matches thrown that we don't know about, but very peculiar as well. We actually Pimp himself. Now, I'm a big fan of Pimp, guys, formerly signed by Dignitas and many other organizations like Heroic out there. A huge fan of the guy. He deserves nothing but the best. And I, he actually did respond with this tweet on screen saying that, yes, it is certainly true. And he himself, as a pro player, was offered many a times to throw CSGO matches. Now, this begs the question. I actually DM'd him as well. I've had a past conversation with him, a very nice guy. I did want to beg the question, ask you guys as well, if you're a pro player like this, and again, he's no longer connected to really any pro scene out there, not playing competitively. I know he's been signed to an organization, but he's not playing for a team right now. The question is, if, if there's an organization out there or players or people out there who have asked you to throw a match, why don't you come forward and expose those people? Why don't you talk about that publicly? Why do you tweet about it and say, yes, people have asked me, but in the time itself, why did you not expose those people? I'm kind of, I'm very curious about that kind of stuff. Why would, if you're a pro player and you're asked to throw a match and you decide not to, why don't you expose those people? It kind of, it, it makes me very interested as to why they wouldn't do that. And uh, leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about that? I thought that was very peculiar why a pro player wouldn't take the opportunity to, to actually, of course, bring those people to light and expose for them for what they're doing. And then this string led to a whole new thing. I'm going to keep this a very, very brief segment, guys, but did you all know that Scream at one point was a part of the Afixio and Uzi roster that threw a match? Did you guys know about this? Of course, a lot of you guys know back in the I by Power days, Skadoodle was on that roster. He was on that Netcode guys roster that was exposed. Uh, that was, of course, with Days and AZK and Swag and Steel. All four of those members got banned except for Skadoodle, who denied and actually knowing about it. He, of course, was notoriously the one who did not accept those skins. And then Nell actually brought to the point where apparently, I never even knew this, guys, back in the day with Epsilon's roster with Uzi and Afixio and Biggie and I think the other guy, I think his name was like GMC or something along those lines. All four of those guys in the Epsilon roster were actually banned by Valve except for Scream himself because he denied, uh, he said he did not know about the instance. I had no idea that Scream was one of those members and he actually could have been banned himself for throwing uh, but allegedly he did not know about that as well. I thought that was crazy. Do you guys know about that? Because I'm not really too good on my CSGO history beyond two years ago and that was just crazy details that came to light for me. It's kind of crazy to see all the pro players out there who've been a part of throws and maybe not known about it, but maybe they did. And I'm not saying he actually did, guys. I'm sure he was uh, innocent there, but it's kind of crazy to see that Scream could not be around today. And Skadoodle, well, he couldn't have just won a major if he actually was caught there. But as always, that's going to do it for today's episode of CSK News. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for commenting down below. And especially thanks for this comment on yesterday's video. Thank you very much. This guy wanted a bigger face cam. I'm not going to do that, but just for you, I'm going to make this full screen, uh, you know, kind of an outro full screen if you want to really see my ugly face up close. As always, thank you all for the great week of CSK News. I will see you all in a couple days, and I do want to touch on some things, give you guys some hints. I will be talking about SOAR Gaming, ESL Pro League rule changes in that next episode. It's going to be a very long, ranty episode, explain some things to
to all of you. And next week, you guys can expect some sticker opening videos. And on top of that, my overall thoughts on the E-League Major. Make sure to leave a comment down below. I'm on a road trip tomorrow, so I'm going to reply to as many comments as possible. As always, thank you all for watching. Hope you all had a great week here. If you guys did, well, my name is Jake Murray, like you. I'll see you all next time. Right, I'm going to leave. Goodbye.